Welcome back to part four on the series of creating genetic algorithms. So what we're doing now is controlling our population or actually performing the breeding. If you open up your population manager.cs file, which is in the scripts folder, and just come down at the bottom, you're going to see the methods that we're going to be working with breed, breed new population and update. So inside of the breed is where we will actually do the combining of the DNA. In breed new population is where we will first of all figure out who is the fittest and then make sure that we breed them together. And then update will keep track of how long the trial has gone for. So the whole purpose is we don't just keep running it forever and ever. We run it for a certain amount of time and then after that time is up, then we take our population, grab the best ones, breed them together, and then start the timer again. Right, so let's start in breed. We'll put the return down the bottom. It's not going to be returning null. It'll be returning something else when we get there. So int start i. So this is where we'll set up the new starting positions for the uh, new offspring that we're creating. So random.range. Remember, we've got four starting positions to choose from. So we're just going to just grab one of them and put the offspring at that location. OK, so we've got our index of the starting position that we want. Then we're going to go game object equals offspring equals instantiate. And we will instantiate the bot prefab, which is our bunny at starting pos array at the start index for that dot transform dot position okay and then I'm just going to come down the next line so that you can see the rest of this code which is basically this dot transform dot rotation now if you like at this point you could actually rotate the offspring randomly which is what I do initially for the bunnies when the first population is actually created up in start. So I'm just going to grab this piece of code here and use it down here and instead of B it's offspring. Just rotate them randomly in some direction so that they do go off in different directions. But because of their training, they should be able to adjust whenever they hit a wall, basically. OK, so we've got that rotate in there. What we're going to do now is get hold of the brain of the offspring. So brain B equals offspring dot get component brain and then we're going to use the brain to first of all initialize the offspring which is what we did with the initial population before um, and then combine the DNA so we will go first of all if random dot range 0 to 100 is equal to 1 so like a 1 in 100 chance what we're going to do is mutate okay so this is mutate now what does mutate mean well mutate is when you get an unusual unexpected random gene pop up in the gene sequence um, or a whole random set of DNA because it does happen in nature and that's how things actually do evolve if we keep breeding the same ones together all the time we might actually not end up with a better bred bunny he might not be able to go further just by chance you might end up with the all the bunnies end up just sat, sat in the corner because we haven't trained them long enough or the fact that they just all trained to a one particular condition now to make sure that you actually can breed that out if you keep running over the simulation again and again you just add a little mutated bunny essentially and that's going to give you enough variety that it might in fact help the population you never know if you want to mutate more you would put a bigger number here but we're just going to keep it quite low so then we want to run our init on that particular brain to set up the random now else what we will do if we're not mutating is that we will still run the init so b dot init 
like this and then b.dna.combine with parent one dot get component brain dot dna and parent two and these will get passed through get component brain dot dna okay and then we just return the offspring like that okay so that's how the breeding will occur. It's going to use the DNAs combine to work out the genes for this particular offspring. So in the next method, we're going to create the entire new population. So the first thing we need to do is actually sort our population to make sure that we are just getting the best of the best. So list game object, which will be a sorted list. It's going to equal population dot order by descending and we're going to order now this is using link commands and basically it's going to look like this we're going to order by where o is o dot get component of the brain and we're going to use dot eggs found in there and we're going to put this in a list so to list like that now let me just see if I can put this down the next line so you can see all of that in the one go okay so we're ordering by descending based on the eggs found that means that the bunnies with the most eggs that they found are going to be up the top of the list so once we've got those we're then in here actually just going to create some little debug code so you can see how the populations are actually changing so we'll create a string called eggs collected and I'm going to put equals generation plus generation so all of these things are actually declared up the top and being kept track of um, so generation then we will loop through this list so for each game object g in sorted list and then eggs collected plus equals a comma and a space plus g dot get component brain dot eggs found and then we will just debug dot log and print that out eggs plus eggs collected it's always good to get a little bit of data feedback when you're doing these things and then we'll go population dot clear like that so that we can create a new population now if you don't want to print this out then it's these lines here that you would just comment out the value of generation I said has already been uh, considered at the top so if we just go back up and remind ourselves of those values that are of important to us basically so we've got just generation here and we've also got an elapsed time trial time and a time scale that you can modify a little later i've also got code that i've included here using the old style on gui that will just print up in the camera view those particular stats for you as well so you can keep track of those if you want to see as these populations tick over okay so let's come back down into breed new population and we will breed our new population now this is going to be a little bit clumsy this code but just bear with me so a while population dot count is less than population size and then inside of here we want int best parent cutoff equals where you want to cut off the parent so if it's halfway through the list then it would be sorted list divided by two so you only keep the top half now if you want to keep the really good ones then you might just keep a quarter of them so you could divide it by four 
example like that. Okay, so this is actually the sorted list.count, of course, <laughs> to get the number of the parents off the top of the list. Now, so that you can pick and choose how many of them you want, this next part of the code is, as I said, a little bit clumsy because we have to keep testing that we've created a new population of exactly the same size of as the previous population. So zero equals int i equals zero. i is less than best parent cutoff minus one. And then we're going to go i plus plus. Then we have a nested for loop, so we get another parent. So for int j equals one. So we're getting like the first person in the list and the second person in the list and breeding them together. And then we're moving on and keep getting the subsequent parents and the next one and breeding them together. J less than best parent cut off. And then J plus plus. Very important that this goes to minus one so that you don't pick up the last parent and that this one goes to the last parent and picks up the last parent. So you don't get an index error when you get to the end of looping through all of those things. So first of all, we'll go population dot add. And what we're going to do is breed. Remember this returns our offspring. So we can add in this particular bunny. So breed sorted list position I is one parent sorted list position j is the other parent and that's adding now at this point we want to test whether we've gone over the size of our population so if population dot count is now full if our like list is now full then we'll go population dot size and we will just break at this point and this is actually population size, not dot size. It's declared up the top. Then if we haven't broken out, we can go and breed the pair in reverse. So we'll copy this line and come down here and we'll actually have J as the first parent and I as the second parent. Then of course, we will also check once more, copy that and put it down here to break out if we've reached the population maximum again. And then if we haven't, we might want to check again just there to make sure that we break out of both of these for loops and then we'll test it again in the while loop before skipping out. All right, so after we've done that while, what we're going to do is come down here. This is our new population. We can delete our old population. So for int i equals zero, i is less than sorted list dot count i plus plus and then inside of here we will go destroy sorted list i and we will increase our generation so generation plus plus okay so we've created a new population We've deleted our old population. Now we're ready to run our update, which is going to actually perform all of these tasks based on our timer. Okay, so down in here, we're going to put elapsed plus equals time dot delta time. Then we're going to check if elapsed is greater than or equal to the trial time, then our trial is actually over. So we come down into here, we will run a maze.reset. Remember we put, or you saw that reset method in the maze, which is actually going to go and turn on all of the eggs again. And then we want a breed new population and then elapsed equals zero. Okay, we're ready to try this out. So let's save this. Now, if we come back into Unity, this is where you can now play around with your population values. 
At this point you can run it but I'm going to come back in the next video and step through the running of it and explain some things with you. If you'd like to support our work, like us on YouTube, visit our website holistic3d.com, look for our courses on holistic3dlearn.com or support us on Patreon.